Last week, Valve rolled out the first closed beta for their in-house streaming program, which has me pretty excited because this is a major feature of their Steam Machine strategy. Since I got an invite, that means I get to bundle up on the couch and play games, and that's good for me because the weather's cold right now, and it's good for Valve because they've been trying to bring PC gaming into the living room for a while now. They first released Big Picture Mode, and then Steam OS, and then this streaming feature, and soon we'll get the Steam Machines themselves. And the biggest disadvantage for running games on those Steam machines is that they're going to be running on a Linux operating system. Unless you dual boot, or unless a massive Linux development migration happens, Steam machines are going to be doing most of their gaming by streaming it from a Windows PC located somewhere else in your house. And that is kind of a niche feature. This will only work for people who have more than one computer, and it's only really ideal if that second computer is hooked up to a living room HDTV. Wired connections are gonna be preferable to wireless, and this is really the most marketable and probably practical usage of a Steam machine. Valve wants them to be satellite stations hooked up to a bigger, more powerful computer. And for the purposes of this video, I'll call the more powerful computer the server computer and the underpowered living room PC, the client computer. So anyways, since I'm in the beta, I wanted to explain what features work, what don't, and how this just might dramatically change the way you think of PC gaming. Note that the results I experienced won't necessarily reflect your own experience. The quality of your streaming gameplay is dependent on many factors, ranging from the details and the movement of the footage being streamed to the quality of your networking hardware. And that's because the playability of a streamed game is directly tied to network latency. I've never had much faith in streaming games over the internet for this reason. Between the speeds and prices of American internet service and hidden charges like bandwidth caps, streaming Streaming online is not an enjoyable way to play your games. There is always a noticeable input lag, it affects your precision and your reaction time, and it makes pretty much any game feel far more sluggish than it's supposed to. I have a sneaking suspicion that when Sony finally comes out with their console streaming service, there's going to be a lot of negative backlash in reaction to just how bad the latency can get. Since you're streaming 2D screen capture footage, and not actually rendering 3D graphics, there's also a lot of image compression going on. In fact, screen capture is exactly what Steam streaming does. Steam simply takes whatever chunk of screen the overlay is hooked into and encodes video footage of that. If you alt-tab out or get a fatal error during the game on the server computer, you'll actually see the desktop of the server computer on the client computer. But streaming games on your own hardwired network, as opposed to doing it over the internet, might just be the way around the latency and the costs of internet streaming. Unfortunately, I can say that even when streaming on a LAN, input lag is still present and so is image compression. However, both of those nuisances are much less severe here, and for some very specific kinds of games, they're almost not an issue at all. But for some very specific other games, there's a whole new can of worms you have to worry about. The first thing you notice on the beta is a new menu option for in-home streaming. Here, you can view a list of PCs connected to Steam and adjust the frame rate, resolution, and bandwidth, which is pretty much image quality. When you have one computer logged into your Steam account, things look the same. But once you log into that account from a different computer, you see that all the games installed across both computers are readily accessible, with a big fat stream button next to the games not installed on the client computer. The client PC is a very old, circa 2008 HT PC and it was cheap even back then. It's got 2 gigs of RAM, an Athlon 64X2 4000 processor, and integrated GeForce 6150 graphics running Windows XP. This thing is ancient. I've always used it for Netflix, emulators, and YouTube, and pretty much nothing else. But for those purposes, it's always served me well. But maybe, through the magic of streaming, it might be able to be used for some cutting-edge modern games. The first game I tried was Dark Souls, and the results were... underwhelming. Input delay was noticeable, but that becomes a secondary problem compared to the low frame rate, which makes the game borderline unplayable. 
but the good news is that those results weren't the norm. Next up was Skyrim, which works surprisingly well. The only interesting thing going on with that one is that I usually launch it through the Skyrim script extender to get all my mods working, and when adding that executable to Steam, it just wouldn't launch for some reason. You either gotta use the official launcher or nothing at all. It's interesting that Dark Souls performed so poorly, because Grand Theft Auto 4 performed much better. And the reason why that's significant is because I have it bundled up with enough graphical mods to bring the frame rate of my own computer stuttering down to the sub-20s. But the frame rate on the client computer pretty much reflected exactly what it would look like on the server computer. On the other hand, with Dark Souls, I somehow lost 60 to 80% of my frames. Anyway, since GTA 4's controls are slow and sluggish to begin with, the input lag was, again, fairly unnoticeable. But what about a faster, twitchier game? My next attempt was Metal Gear Rising, which usually stays locked at a perfect 60 frames per second. However, on the client side, it was getting more like 30 frames per second. Which is totally playable, but it made the game run in slow motion. So that was pretty weird. Some of the best results came from Valve's own games. Counter-Strike Global Offensive also averaged about 30 frames per second, but it still felt very quick and responsive, which is important because it's a game all about making fast, twitchy mouse movements. For some reason, the input lag was extremely minuscule compared to the other games, and that's also how well Half-Life 2 performed on streaming. And last, just as I suspected, 2D games actually make the transition from one computer to another nearly flawlessly. It was very hard to notice that Spelunky and La Mulana were not playing on the computer they were installed on. Frame rates hovered closer to 60, and any input lag was negligible. For Spelunky, this was actually better performance than what the local installation was giving me. And the reason why may be because footage of 2D games is much less demanding to process. The backgrounds of a 2D game usually stay static, and since a video file is essentially color data for the coordinates of every pixel on the screen, that means that footage of 2D games contains a lot less data being processed through the stream. And that's also why I suspect that less demanding games like Dark Souls and Metal Gear Rising are actually underperforming compared to Grand Theft Auto and Skyrim. Games that have faster moving cameras and characters with more complicated details and colors flying around are creating more complicated footage for the client to decode, and lowering those Steam options didn't help either. It just seems like the integrated graphics card in that computer just isn't enough to process the video fast enough. Streaming isn't a magical cure-all to the problems of PC system requirements. You still need a video card capable of decoding HD videos very, very fast. Since there's so much more of a process to streaming games rather than rendering them locally, I'm very reluctant about the prospects of us getting a truly fast, low-latency streaming service anytime soon, even on a home network. I do plan on playing some of my future games through Steam streaming, but I can't imagine this becoming the normal way to play games. Between the input lag and the low frame rates and the image compression, it's 90% of the time going to be inferior to playing a local installation. But there is that 10%. This actually will improve my life in at least one very significant way. My Netflix machine is now going to become a Civilization machine. Civ 5 makes for a surprisingly fun party game, and no one knows that because it's been relegated to a lonely office room for so long. I've had so much fun playing this game out on the couch with friends, but it's a hassle carrying my computer out there. And now I don't have to do that. And so far, the game seems to be working fine on streaming. Civ 5 doesn't need fast reaction times, and it doesn't need high frame rates. There's no twitching at all, and these are the kind of games that streaming is going to work perfectly with. It might be inferior for twitchy action genres, but once I get some friends over here, we're going to have a hell of a lot of fun playing Civ on this thing. And once it becomes public, I highly recommend that you guys give that a try as well.